Hello everyone, welcome to Explore Electronics. In this video, let's learn about executing a C program, constant variable and data types, and also we learn about operators and expressions. So let's begin with executing a C program. We all know that languages like C, C++, Java, these are all English like natural language. So when I say natural language, it is easy for us to understand. So these are called high level language. But the computer cannot understand these high level languages. So what computer can understand is only machine code. That is only binary digits either 0 or 1. So there should be some mechanism which converts this high level language. That is the source code. Source code is nothing but the code what we write. Okay, the program. So there should be a mechanism which converts the source code into machine level code. So this is known as compilation. So what does compiler do? It converts or compiles the source code into machine level code. So uh, with this understanding, let's see the steps involved in executing a C program. So as you can see here, the first step is to create a source code. So creating a source code is nothing but writing the C program. Once we write the C program, the first thing what the compiler does is it converts the C program or the source code into machine language. Okay, this is the second step. And once the compiler converts the source code into machine code, now this will be an executable file. Okay, so we can run this exe. That means the computer is now able to understand your C program and it processes the data based on the commands that you have given in the program. Now the final step is the computer generates the results according to the code. So these are the steps involved in executing a program. Let's understand with a small flowchart. First we have a source code which will be given to the compiler. So here it is a C program. Once the compiler compiles your C program, it is going to create an executable file. So what is the compiler output will be an exe. This is that is the executable file. This will be in machine language. Once the executable file is ready, we need to run it. After that, we are going to get the result. So this is the basic execution flow of a C program. Now let's move on to tokens. So what are tokens in C language? As you can see, tokens are the most important elements to be used in creating a C program. Uh, these are the smallest meaningful elements of a C program. So th the compiler understands these elements. Now what are the types of tokens we have in C? We have five types of tokens, keywords, identifiers, strings, operators and constants. So we will look into each of them. In detail. Now what are keywords? Keywords are nothing but these are the predefined words which are having their own importance and functionality. We cannot use these keywords in uh, defining a variable name or a function name or uh, a constant name. We cannot use these keywords to define anything in the C program. These are predefined and they are reserved for their own functionality. And there are 32 such keywords in C uh, which are as shown in this table. So in this keywords there are uh, data types like int, long and uh, constant, float. So these are all the data types. There are uh, data types and all will be used for writing a condition. For is used to write a loop. So likewise we have all these words which are reserved for specific purpose. Let's take an example and understand how these keywords will be used in the C program. For example, int x is equal to 12. So this int is a keyword, right? And x is the name that we have given for this variable. So instead of x, you cannot use any of these keywords. So keywords are reserved. And this is the value that we are giving. Coming to identifiers. 
identifiers are the name that we use to give for a function or a variable or array or string so this is user defined words and these identifiers should be other than keywords so we cannot use keywords here so there are certain rules for setting up these identifiers so we'll see one by one the first character should be either an alphabet or underscore so whenever you are giving some name to a variable for example str for example so you cannot give string since it is a keyword so we can give any other names like str a short form and you can also start it with an underscore right so this is also valid but it should not begin with numbers so you cannot use 0 str or 1 str anything is not allowed which is starting with a number and these identifiers are case sensitive that means str in small and str in capital both are different so it considers this and this are as different it should not contain any commas and blank spaces it should not contain the keywords as i said earlier and it's uh, there is a size that is defined it should not be more than 31 characters so it should be within this and also the last point is important uh, whatever identifiers and uh, the names that we are giving for the variables functions or anything that should be short and meaningful and it should be easy to understand so keeping this in mind we can construct the identifiers now let's understand strings strings are defined as array of characters so these are always terminated by a null character so how does compiler know that it is a string whenever a compiler encounters a sequence of characters which are written within the double quotes so the compiler understands that this is a string and it will append a null character at the end this is the way that the compiler understands that it is a string and it adds a null character if null character is found at the end of the string that means it is a string How to declare a string so a string can be declared like this first we need to mention the data type as char and give a name to that and this is the size of the string so this is called as declaration and suppose we want to initialize it when we declare it so along with declaration we can also initialize it or you can initialize it later also after declaring so this is how we initialize using the equal to operator and the string whatever you are initializing this variable with should be in double quotes so there are other ways also to initialize a string for example if you are not specifying any size the compiler will automatically allocate the space or size during runtime but if you already know what size the string should take then you can define it so as you can see here for this string the first character will be stored in index 0 so this is the uh, array of strings so the first index is 0 it starts from 0th index and the 0th index will be having the first character followed by the second third fourth and the last one will be appended by the compiler as a null character we'll learn more about the strings their usage and how we are going to use them in the uh, code in the later units what are constants as the word suggests constant is a fixed value that is assigned to a variable fixed value means the value of this variable cannot be modified in the program for example if you want uh, there is an example program here which says const float pi is equal to 3.14 so we have declared the value of pi as 3.14 we have defined it suppose you are trying to change the value to 4.5 what happens then the compiler gives an error saying you cannot modify the constant value so you should use whatever you have assigned the value for pi the same value can be used in the program but cannot be modified that is what a constant keyword means so you can define it in two ways one is using the const keyword like you can see in the example here const float and they have used the value and also if you remember we can use we can define the constant variables in the preprocessor by using hash define hash define pi 
3.14 so this is also another way of defining the constants now what are data types every variable in c has a data type data type is nothing but the type of data that variable is able to hold okay each data type requires different amounts of memory and has some specific operations which can be performed on it so uh, in the chart below we can see the different data types that are present in c we have primary data types user defined data types and primitive data types in primary we have four types that is character float int and void so again uh, the character data type can have assigned and unsigned character float again has three different variations that is float double and long double this is nothing but the precision of a floating number like after a point how many digits of precision it is giving so double is going to give you more precision and long double again it is going to give more precision than double and int again in integer we have int long int unsigned long int long long int unsigned long long int short and unsigned short int so these are the possible variations or combinations of int data type and void void is nothing but there is no data type it is simply void in user defined we have enum and type def we will look into this when we start our programming and in primitive data types we have pointers arrays structures and unions so these see this primary data types are nothing but the basic data types but this primitive are we can say these are advanced data types pointers arrays structures and unions we we will learn deep about these uh, primitive data types in the upcoming chapter now what are operators so in any expression for example a plus b we can say c is equal to a plus b so this is an expression right there will be an operator which operates on a on operands so here a and b are nothing but are operands so uh, there are different types of operators which perform different operations on the operands for example here you can see the chart we have binary operators unary operators ternary operators in binary operators there is arithmetic operators which does the arithmetic operations like addition subtraction multiplication division these all uh, operations comes under arithmetic and we have logical operations also like and operation or operation likewise we have comparison also we can compare two two operands if a is greater than b or if a is less than b or we can also check if a is equal to b so remember that we use double equal to to compare two elements and assignment operator is nothing but equal to as we saw in our previous examples we can assign a variable to its value using equal to operator so this is called as assignment operator and conditional operator a is greater than b and we have bitwise operator operator it operates in bit level and coming to unary operators we have this unary operator is nothing but it operates on a single operand like we have increment and decrement again in increment pre and post increment in decrement pre and post increment so i will explain this incremental operations in in upcoming videos but for now just understand that increment operator increments the value of a operand for example if we give a++ and the value of a is assigned to for example 2 so what a++ will give the output of this uh, increment operation will be 3 that means a is incremented by 1 and uh, similarly decrement operation if a is 2 and we apply the decrement operator on this then the output will be 1 that is the value of a is decremented by 1 and we have ternary operators are nothing but the conditional checking now what are expressions an expression is a formula in which operands are linked to each other by the use of operators to compute a value so we use operators to compute a value by operating on the operands that is what an expression is an operand can be a function reference a variable an array element or even a constant so there is an example given over here so we can see that there is a variable called x whose value is assigned to 
Now what we are doing, we are checking if this variable is an even number or odd number. How do we check that? If the number is divisible by 2, then that is an even number. So we are checking if x is divisible by 2 equal to 0. That means if it is properly divisible by 2, the remainder should be 0. So if this condition is satisfied, then it will enter this loop. So what is it doing? It is printing that the number x is even. Else, it is printing the number x is not even. In this case, x is 4 and it should satisfy this condition and the output will be the number is even. So this is an expression, right? Similarly, we can have any number of expressions by using various operations done on them. We have different types of expressions in C. Arithmetic expressions, basically for all arithmetic operations. And we have relational expressions, logical expressions and conditional expressions. So this here what we saw was a conditional expression. And also we have an arithmetic expression over here, which is the division. Thank you.